What's up guys, it's Franklin from Do Humor and I'm finally back with some more new content for you guys. Yeah, I took a little bit of hiatus for uh, May, but uh, we're back and we're back strong uh, for uh, this channel. Definitely a new series coming up, I will be talking about it more and more as the time goes by, but it will premiere sometime this week. Uh, so keep off for that. But right now we're talking about True Dracos, guys. One of my favorite decks, and hopefully a deck that uh, gets stronger with the next ban list. Um, but you going on me? Please bring back Dynamite. <laughs> All right. Um. Anyway, guys, let's get started with this, and uh, we're gonna start off with the monster. Speaking of the card himself, Dynamite Knight, man. The True Draco fight, really good card. Um, basically, you could search out a continuous sp spell card. Um from your deck and either set it, activate it on the field, or just add it to hand. It's really good because the trap cards are really powerful and really disruptive. Um, it's at one, hopefully it comes back to three, and if it does come back three, updated profile time, guys. Um, but basically, it's really good. Um, probably the best true Draco after Masterpiece, of course. Uh, now we're going to Ignis Heat, and Ignis Heat, we played three of him because he does the exact opposite of um, true Draco uh, Dynamite Knight, basically. He, uh, Ignis Heat basically searches out a spell or spell tr uh, spell card for true Dracos, uh, and the spell cards are really good because in your turn, they draw, there's some that draw, there's some that, uh, they both draw, but they're both really good to set up your cord. So he does the same thing in the sense of that you it can activate during any time your opponent activates any card you could just activate and search and add either add it or activate on the field. So really good card as well, 2400. Um, so it is somewhat of a big beater. So we do play two ma uh, ma um, maidens basically, the True Draco uh, caster. And she's a monster searcher, so she could search out Ignis Heat or a Dynamite Knight, so pretty good. Um, not as good as her brothers, because obviously searching out the spell or searching out the trap is much more vital uh, during your opponent's turn than obviously searching out a monster, unless you already have a setup, so she's okay. Now, on to our draw engine, and obviously, I still do play the Magician Souls. <sighs> Come on, guys. It's really good. Really amazing. It gets gets a free summon, basically, if you, uh, control, uh, if you send a special uh, level 6 or higher spellcaster. And uh, it could just discard, basically send two spell, car spell trap cards that you really don't need at the time. And refix your hand by drawing two cards. So, really good. I, I play it. If you don't, if you can't afford it, just play um, Waterfalls of the Dragon Souls. It's a really good card as well because it searches out any Worm type, or you could send a Worm type and draw equal equal to amount of cards. So it's really good um, as well. It's a good budget alternative to this card. So three Magician Souls. Now on to um, Magician Apprentice. Um, basically, the card I send with Magician Souls so I can special summon him um, without wasting my normal summon. Because I do want my normal summon, even though I can't, I don't have to use my normal summon to summon the True Draco cards. I do still need it because of one engine I have. But Illusion, Illusion, um, Illu oh, is it Apprentice Illusion Magician? My bad, guys. It does isn't as bricky as people think because you get special summon her by discarding a card. She's a 2,000 attacker and um, she's okay. Yeah, obviously, you do not want in an optimal hand to draw into her, but you play 41 cards and um, yeah, she's okay. It's like it, it, the risk outweighs the the benefits outweigh the risk, in my opinion, to play her. And now we got two. Spellbook Magicians of Prophecy. This is my other draw card in the deck. Um, it really budget as well, so you guys should definitely incorporate it if you have it into your True Draco decks. Basically, this card is normal summon. You can, or flipped up, you can add a spell book card, uh, spell card, which is very important because you can search out Spellbook of Secrets, which then can search out your draw card, the Spellbook card, to draw you cards. And it's a good setup. It's good Ash Bait, Hand Trap Bait, and uh, really good. So it does fix up your hand. That is it for the monsters. Let's move on to the spells, guys. And the first spell, and the, probably the most important spell, it is Dragonic Diagram. It's limited for a reason, guys. It is really good. 
Um, basically, it gains, it gives you a true Draco card, 300 attack and defense on the field, but, but that is probably the weakest effect out of all of it, because not only does it give attack boost, it does give prevention uh, from your monsters being destroyed by battle one time per turn. And the most important thing is that it, if you pop a card on the field, it doesn't have to be a true Draco or just any card on your field or hand. Pop it, you could search out any true Draco card you want, basically, or true, true King card you want and add it to hand. So it's a, basically the best um, consistent card, consistency card, and it's really good. So yeah, definitely play it. And we obviously play the Taylor Foreman because we want to search out Dragonic Diagram. Now on to the continuous spells for True Draco, and we play True Draco Heritage. Basically, True Draco Heritage has a neat effect that it lets you draw cards equal to the number of True Draco slash True King cards that have been sent to the graveyard, monster spell, or trap. So ultimately, you can draw up to three cards. Normally, you don't draw up to three cards. It's more of like an icing on the cake type effect that you tribute and summon a True Draco card. Then you can draw one or two. Sometimes, or like if you have True Organic Dagger and True Draco, you'll probably draw up to two cards. Uh, but it does have an additional effect, which makes it just as good. It lets you, it gives you an additional tribute summon. Like it basically lets you immediately tribute summon a card, um, a continuous spell trap or monster card to summon a True Draco card from hand. And then it also, if it gets sent uh, to the graveyard, it basically pops a spell trap your opponent controls. So it's just a plus anywhere you think of it. Pluses you for days. Now on to the other, the brother of Heritage basically is Disciples of the True Phoenix, the True Draco Phoenix. It's really good because it does, it's really good late game. It's okay for uh, early game, but in late game it's really good because it shuffles your uh, True Draco cards, three, three True Draco cards or True King cards back to the deck and draw a card. It does have the same effect where it lets you get an additional tribute summon basically of a True Draco from Ham. And then it also has the pops of your opponent's spell trap, so it's really amazing. And now we do play one upstart, uh, plus one, really good. And we do play the spell book of secrets, which searches out either the blue boy, spell, uh, the uh, spell caster, uh, spell book monster, or it lets you uh, search out this bad boy, knowledge. And knowledge basically gets you uh, draw two if you send either a uh, spell cast from the field or a uh, spell book card uh, from your hand and obviously we could send magician souls with this card so magician souls is never dead guys so that is really good now on to the traps and we're gonna start off with three true draco apocalypse and true draco apocalypse is uh, pretty good honestly um, it basically, when you activate it, you can tribute summon one of your uh, True Draco cards from hand, just like the continuous spells. But additionally, from that, it, if you pop a True Draco card from your field, you can cut in half your opponent's uh, monster's attack and defense, which is really neat uh, because you can activate this during the damage step and destroy basically any true, uh, any opponent monster at that point, which are True Draco monsters. Uh, it also has another effect that when it's sent from the field, uh, or sent to the graveyard basically, you can pop a monster on your opponent's field. So, really good disruptor any way you slice it. And then we up to uh, the last uh, continuous trap for True Draco. It is True King's Return, basically a call of the haunted for them. Um, it also has an additional disruptor effect that if it's sent uh, to the field, you could pop a monster. And, um, and it also has the activation effect that it lets you tribute a card and summon a true Draco during your opponent's turn. So it's a good disruptor. It's at one. So you wanna, you, I highly recommend that you don't tribute it unless you need to. So now on to a card that we might need because this deck is a hard going first. So we do play evenly match. Yeah, evenly match is too good. Um, it, it, at worst, is a negate. Your opponent has to negate this. So. It lets you uh, play around some of their um, big boards, break my boards like An Emancipator does and all these other decks try to do. So uh, this deck is a hard going first. So when they make you go second or when your opponent picks to go first, you're going to want a blow up card. And this is a blow up card. So highly recommend playing it if you can. Now another couple, another card that's really good, it's a Floodgate. It is a... Uh, there can only be one, and there can only be one. Still pretty good, guys. Um, 
definitely if your opponent control can only control one type uh, that is a big deal especially if you started early combo and emancipators can't go into needle fiber if they only have one monster one rock monster they can't do much with block dragon if they can only summon block dragon and can't do anything else so a really good card definitely played three of it and at worst you just side it out going going uh when you go to game two basically so really good now on to more floodgates because that's what we need in this uh, game more floodgates that say no to your opponent um the, the monarchs erupt basically monarchs erupt uh if you control no cards in the extra deck which we don't uh you can activate this card and basically your tribute summon mo like any Basically, you can negate the effects of any face-up monster that isn't a tribute summon monster, and that's really good. Um, so, most of our decks, obviously all of our monsters get tribute summon except for Magician Souls and Blue Boy. But by that time, you should have already resolved uh, Magician Souls and Blue Boy, and then you activate this during your opponent's turn. So, you're good. And then, why not just play Skill Drain? Since we're already playing Monarchs Erupt, if we're gonna really be, if we're already gonna be uh, uh, kind of uh, douchey, you might as well just go all the way right and pay a thousand and do it <laughs> anyway last cards uh, to make it 41 we do play solemn judgment because we want to keep saying no to our opponents they want to evenly match us no they want to cosmic cyclone or dragonic diagram are we activate it no um, lightning storm no okay um, really good card we are a hard going first deck and um, we want as much uh, negates as possible and disruptors as possible and this card can do it and that is it guys for the deck i hope you guys enjoyed it and uh please if you guys really love our content hit the like button subscribe for more awesome content we also do have a tcg affiliated link that i do leave in the description and it really goes a long way to help our content and help us make more amazing videos for you guys so if you guys are going to purchase anything from tcg player just use that affiliate link it's in the description um and yeah thank you for watching our channel and our videos and franklin from do humor out peace guys I wanna give you every chance, and I'll stand